when you talk about learning, there are two aspects of learning. One is a sort of innate learning we can call, uh, whether it is very conscious animals or not so conscious animals, the, the animals which have first order theory of mind or second order or third order theories of mind, uh, there is some amount of learning that goes on naturally like learning foraging techniques or even tool making abilities in human that not necessarily is a, it's a, a, a formal education. It can be learning by imitation and definitely language is one of them. Whereas what we are mostly doing right now in these kind of academic places is learning through formal education. What is formal education? It's, it is a process by which society deliberately transmits accumulated knowledge, skills and values from one generation to another. These are the various different education institutes uh, and research institutes that were started in India purely by Indians keeping in view of Indian uh, uh, you know, uh, advantage in mind. Then a few, uh, although it was again helped by British government, uh, but mostly you know, an initiative by Indians who were uh, in the, the senior administration in the British government to start various different research funds. 1911 is the first research fund was started, uh, which later became ICMR. It was called India Research Fund Association, which was funding, I guess, very small amount of money to do research in India. And 1926 is the time when Indian Council of Agriculture Research started, which is continuing to be Indian. I think it was Imperial Council of Agriculture Research. Now it's called Indian Council of Agriculture Research. And 1942 is the time when the CSIR started. Because of this role model uh, kind of a approach, there was a quick expansion of some of the efforts that were started in 1950s uh, to a larger part of the country. There were only five IITs were set up, but the impact of those IITs is much larger in the country scale is simply because there are so many institutes were trying to copy IIT model. And, and this helped to change uh, you know, the literacy rate, change the science and technology, uh, um, you know, the establishment of the country. So that's why I said, uh, you know, considering that we were, literacy rate was just about 12% in 1947, it was very low. And then what we are today, that means we are really have come a very long way in just two generations. And current of Indian economy is what is on a service economy. And everybody is talking that we should move to knowledge economy, right? So that was knowledge commission was set up to do that. How to promote Indian economy, or how to promote Indian economy from service economy to knowledge economy. There is uh, uh, some meaning to this discussion. It's simply because service economy is not sustainable in the long term. It's true for in every sense. For example, automobile industry, all the cars that are on the road today, except maybe Tata Nano and Tata Indica, are designed outside. And to design, I'm, I'm, I'm purely talking to students right now, thinking that students know less than me and others can close your ears. <laughs> so the, you, if you want to design a new car, you need a physicist to start with someone who understand the, 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 you know, the thermodynamics, the, some of them understand what is an internal combustion engine, how does it work, how to make it energy efficient, and then aerodynamics, you know, then the, the, how to design a car body so that it is, if, you know, aerodynamically, you know, very efficient and kind of stuff. You need a physicist to start with all doing all these things and then a mechanical engineer will come and build a prototype or, uh, you know, build the actual car. But what we are doing is basically building it. We bring all the designs, whether Hyundai or uh, you know whatever it is, Honda or something. There are massive you know assembly units in India which are producing these cars, but all of them are designed elsewhere. It's simply because we don't have enough number of physicists going to industry, automobile industry, uh, to design something new. So what what I'm trying to say is whether it is for academic purposes or for industrial purposes, we need large number of basic scientists. And that's what we need to do now. So for that purpose, what we need to do is to, is to go ahead into some kind of a new education and what you call this, you know, education for this 21st century India. Uh, so, so when you talk about uh, science, science education, because we are all scientists here and pursuing science, obviously, we will be more interested in science education than any other education, right? So science, when we say it has to be absolute, science has no borders, science is universal. A scientific truth is something absolute. People, you know, pick up you know, jobs in a supermarket. At the same time, you can also pick up a job as a teacher in a university or a researcher in a scientific institute. So, in a way, 
the science that many places we do, it's because it's a job, then the way you do science, the kind of science that you want to pursue is, is very different. And that is mostly influenced by the fact that you need to get your salary. Not because you are passionate about something, not because you have an internal drive to address certain specific question that you need to find out and kind of stuff. So there's a massive expansion of our research base and education base. As you can see here, many of these are education institutes, right? What I mentioned here, first few are education institutes and these are the dedicated research institutes. So <laughs> this, all this is possible because we invested very well in the first 50 years or in the first 10, 15 years, which sort of helped in to change the economy around, come around and this was possible. I don't think this would have been possible in 1990s because every time when you go to the government and you want to start something new, they would say no money. So obviously there's nothing you could do. But now, whenever you go to the government, they say, you want to start, we to start one more in my state, we'll give you double the money that you want. So in a way, you get more money than what you want to do all these things. And there's increased funding for research. When I started, uh, there was whatever the typical grant, you know, with inflation corrected, now I'm getting four times that grant. The simple reason is we have doubled the amount of money for research, uh, sorry, uh, or quadruple the amount of money for research, but only double the number of scientists in the country. So each of us getting, you know, more amount of money uh, that way. Funding is also becoming more flexible. Earlier, we are all, you know, uh, sort of bound by some of these, you know, inflexible uh, rules of the, you know, grants. You cannot do this, you cannot do this and kind of stuff. Nowadays, uh, you know, funding agents are also becoming very flexible and uh, in a way they are becoming more friendly uh, to us. And the, hopefully once it is completely functional, it is the Act of Parliament uh, for establishing the Science and Engineering Research Board is passed. And once it's fully functional, this is supposed to be the equivalent of NSF in US and hopefully it will give all the flexibility that we need to do good academic research. <coughs> so there is now funds for public private partnership, if they have some idea you can start your own company, if you are you can give your idea to another company which can convert it to a product and the funding is many times provided by the government even for the purpose. You know, so that's also, government is also funding small innovation center, that's, that's what I mentioned. So that may be a different ball game, but when you talk about this physics or chemistry or biology and particularly experiment, you need certain number of people, what you call as critical mass of scientists, and that's the only way to increase the academic excellence. No average scientist in US is afraid of competition from India. It's simply because of the is a, is a, this is more of the cultural pact because the image of the country was, was not that good. In that context, I was very happy that last year when I was in France, I, had, I was invited uh, to attend the annual talks of an institute, CNRS Institute. They call it as annual retreat, we call it annual talks here. And one of the scientists who spoke about his work there and later he came and told me, please don't uh, you know, disclose whatever I mentioned to Jitu and, uh, and I'm worried about he may beat me in, in you know, in the competition. It's, it was, it was, you know, I was so happy, you know. <laughs> I said definitely I'm not going to, even if I had thought that I would tell him about the, your results, I would not want to say this because let him compete with you and, and beat you at some point. And particularly in, in the context of student, that's important because, you know, that's whatever we do, Although we are doing research, we it satisfies our own egos, we publish, but ultimately there has the major indirect impact of all the research that we do is, is the training that is conferred to the students because they are the ones, you know, there will be an, you know, some kind of a, uh, an exponential effect of it through the students who are going to take it, the learning, you know, how to do science, how to develop confidence in doing good science, how to develop, uh, you know, abilities to take up a very risky project or a challenging project comes when they, when they go through this kind of a training in, a, in an institute. At the level of, at the time of learning, the importance should be to basic science. Your knowledge base should be strong, broad, and on which you can build up, you know, specific projects 
it could be product development or it could be addressing a specific question in or related to the nature. So we need to change this uh, examination oriented uh, system to learning oriented education system and excite students to learn basic science, motivate them to ask fundamental questions, creative thinking, interdisciplinary approach and kind of stuff. So this is what the aim by uh, based on which these institutes were set up. There are five institutes called Indian Institute of Science Education and Research IASCRs in short and this is basically to integrate high quality research with undergraduate teaching. So if I am not excited about what science I am doing, if I am doing it for the sake of some kind of a salary I get and obviously then students will see that as a model rather than you know the exciting science that we do as a model. These, these students hopefully that is what our wish is that they will become a, 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 an idea generators whether it is in academia or in industry. Faculty, it is for the students to know, we recruit best and support them generously because the idea is if you really recruiting someone is good, if you do not support them it is basically waste of talent and waste of you know basically no point in hiring people if you do not want to support. So we hire people if we can support if some may be coming with an, with an idea that I want a small synchrotron for my own work obviously we cannot build a synchrotron we will say no please we cannot provide however good that person is. But if someone who is very good but we can definitely provide uh, or if we can go an extra mile to provide facility for research we will do that. So those who are going out now for a postdoc and want to come back after 4 or 5 years in about 7 years we would like to have about 40 to 45 faculty in biology alone about 150 in all together and we will have about at any given time on the campus we will have about 1000 undergraduate students and about 750 or so PhD students and we will have several interdisciplinary research centers. We already started one on epigenetics, one on nanoscience and we will hopefully we'll have more. Okay, this is the, the vision on which based on which we are working and thank you.